Ravensbrück was a Nazi German concentration camp designed only for women, and it was located in a swamp near the village of Ravensbrück, around 50 miles north of Berlin. Himmler, who established the camp in 1938, identified it as a good location for a concentration camp. Rail and water connections were good. Another factor that influenced Himmler's choice was the sighting in an area of natural beauty. Himmler believed that the cleansing of German blood should begin close to nature. Ravensbrück served as a training base for around 3,500 female SS supervisors who staffed it as well as other concentration camps. There were around 34 satellite camps attached to Ravensbrück. Many of them were stationed at military industrial plants. Initially set up in the year 1938, it was designed to hold around 6,000 inmates, but by the end of the Second World War, it housed more than 36,000. About 50,000 women who were held there died at Ravensbrück from disease, starvation and being overworked. Some inmates were even used in medical experiments. In the very beginning, in the camp's early days, conditions were hygienic and the prisoners were given clean uniforms. By the end of the war, conditions had deteriorated significantly. Barracks built for 250 women later held 1,500 or 2,000, with multiple women in a single bed. Thousands of women did not even have part of a bed and were lying on the floor without even a blanket. When a group of 500 Jewish women arrived from Hungary in the fall of 1944, they were immediately placed in a huge tent with a straw floor and eventually, and unfortunately, died in masses. All these conditions were made even worse by the fact that the prisoners were treated terribly by the female guards at Ravensbrück. Female Nazi guards tended to be from lower to middle class backgrounds and generally had no relevant work experience under their belt upon recruitment. Many of the young women came from poorer families, left school early and had few career opportunities ahead of them. A job at a concentration camp meant earning higher wages, having comfortable accommodation and achieving financial independence. Many had been indoctrinated early in Nazi youth groups, much like the men, and so believed in Hitler's ideology. Many female guards state that they felt that they were supporting society by doing something against its enemies. Himmler noted that Johanna Langefeld had a certain authority as well as a knack for quieting prisoners without a fuss because he marked her down as Ravensbrück's future chief female guard. She was among many female guards there who would treat female prisoners brutally. Langefeld was responsible for enforcing many harsh rules on the prisoners. Inside the blocks, all prisoners were allocated a bunk bed, a bowl, a plate, an aluminium cup, a knife, fork and spoon, and a small cloth for drying and polishing the utensils. If anything went missing or polishing was done incorrectly, that would mean a report to Langefeld, who had given instructions on exactly how the polishing should be done. At 5 a.m., a siren woke the camp, and prisoners were marched outside their blocks to line up in ranks of five for roll call, also known as appell. Langefeld sometimes took appell in person, and although she never hit or kicked, she would sometimes slap a woman sharply across the face if the way they answered roll call did not suit her. Dorothea Bintz was another one of the many cruel guards found at Ravensbrück. Nicknamed La Bintz by the French inmates, Dorothea was only 19 years old when she came from a small town located close to Ravensbrück where she worked as a maid. At some point she applied to be a guard at Ravensbrück. Many Ravensbrück survivors recounted how Bintz beat, slapped, kicked, whipped, shot and stomped upon women with her heavy boots. Her cruel streak was considered a success at the camp, and she quickly rose through the ranks and was promoted to chief wardress. Dorothea also taught a variety of classes at Ravensbrück, because the camp was also a training center for guards who went on to work at Auschwitz and other concentration camps, and Bintz was responsible for instilling brutal behavior in them. Bintz's appetite for cruelty quickly made an impression on everyone, and she became infamous. And yet, until she got the job there at the camp, there had been no indication of the extreme violence in her nature. Later, as she climbed up the ranks, she would share to others how her father had told her not to take the job, but the opportunity to live away from home in comfortable quarters with good pay and a smart uniform was too good to turn down. An old friend recounted looking closely at her when she came home to visit and was astonished how her face had changed since she went to work there. It was harder and crueler somehow. Bintz told her friend that the prisoners were all godless criminals and prostitutes and treating them harshly was the only way to keep them in check and that they deserved it. When Dorothea Bintz was asked at her trial why she didn't tell anyone about the atrocities she witnessed, she responded by saying, there was no point, as everyone knew. She was 19 when she started working at the camp and so Dorothea had been a blank slate. 
She learned about life during her six years as a guard at Ravensbrook. The world of the camp seemed, to her, normal. There were many female guards at Ravensbrook who committed horrible acts throughout the years, even if just in passing. Irma Gresser trained at Ravensbrook in 1942 before going on to become the Beast of Belsen. She joined the SS as a conscript of the SS Aufsirinnen, who were female guards found within the concentration camps, juvenile detention facilities and police supervisory services. Members of this organization were never considered full-fledged members of the SS, but rather as employees of the Waffen-SS. About 2,500 women served as SS Aufsirinnen throughout the Holocaust. Gresser stated at her trial that she was conscripted to work at Ravensbrook against her will, but the record at the camps shows she joined voluntarily and was more than willing to commit the act she did. She was assigned to be trained as a concentration camp guard. She went through three weeks of grueling training at Ravensbrook to harden her and in order to generate fanatical devotion to the Nazi racial ideal. In her first days, she is remembered as apologizing to a camp inmate when she stepped in front of her. For her victims, later, it was remarkable to hear that Gresser was ever that polite. Gresser participated in inmate beatings at Ravensbrook, and this was only a small part of her training. She made 54 Reichmark per month, significantly less than what her colleagues earned, and she was emboldened to work harder and to be more brutal in order to earn more money. Presumably, she trained under Dorothea Bince and learned to be a sadist, as Bince was one. Gresser learned to use her whip and pistol to punish inmates for the slightest infractions of camp rules and was fond of lashing beautiful women with her whip. An inmate recalled Gresser's sadism and cruelty, saying that many of the women developed infections from injuries caused by the braided wire end of her cellophane whip. Ruth Nudek was another guard at the camp who eventually became a supervisor at Ravensbrook. She trained there and immediately Nudek soon began impressing her superiors with her unflinching brutality towards the female prisoners which ended up resulting in her promotion to the rank of Barrack Overseer in late July 1944. In the Ravensbrook camp, she was known as one of the most ruthless female guards. A prisoner commented after the war that she had seen Nudek cut an inmate with the sharp edge of her shovel without any remorse. She also involved herself in the selection of over 5,000 women and children so that they could be sent to the gas chambers. The female guards with administrative positions at the camp were arrested at the end of the war by the Allies and tried at hamburg Ravensbrück trials from the years 1946 to 1948. Sixteen of the accused were found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity and were sentenced to death. The Allied Ravensbrück trials continued for two years. During that time, many guards, including Binz, Schwarzhuber, Binder, Randor, Salzquart, Nudek and Gebhardt, were among those that were executed. It has often been said that the SS and their associates found it easy to kill in their concentration camps because they didn't get to know their victim due to the speed and the industrial scale of the brutalities. But at Ravensbrook, which was a much smaller camp that had been in existence for such a long time, they often knew the prisoners well, making the acts committed there all the more atrocious. They are gone, but their cruel deeds will never be forgotten. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button so you can enjoy more walks through history.